We want to understand. We look for patterns. We create stories, beliefs, mythologies about ourselves, about the world. These stories could be expressed in religious terms, in scientific terms, in personal terms, in spiritual terms. We want understanding. Or do we? We want understanding. We want good things. We want world peace. We want people to be nice to each other. We want no more wars, no more pollution. Or do we? There's a story told by Uspensky about his mentor Gurdjieff. They were having a dinner party in Moscow. This was early on in the 20th century. Gurdjieff would put on these big dinner parties and there was a, an intellectual there, a Russian intellectual, he was a journalist. He was always going on about world peace apparently. And Uspensky described the situation. In fact he was a bit embarrassed about what was going on because, although it's not, it's not spelled out, I think it's apparent that Gurdjieff had hypnotised this intellectual journalist, the one that was always going on about political change and peace. And Gurdjieff asked him what he really wanted, what he truly wanted. And the answer was strawberry jam. So I say we want understanding, we want to make sense of things. But underneath it, there are far more basic emotions going on. And if we think of ourselves as spiritual people, as intellectual, then we don't like to look too closely about the sort of things we might be thinking about a lot of the time or the, the sort of things that we might want. In fact, we might be interested in spirituality or religion or the bigger questions or intellectualism because we are basically feeling a lot of pain, emotional pain or existential pain, however you want to describe it. It's basically pain because we have some very, very basic desires. And if we're truly interested in spiritual practice, we have to acknowledge this because this is our reality. It doesn't matter how undignified these emotions are, how belittling they might be to our own self-image, how inconsistent they might be with ourselves as spiritual practitioners or spiritual heroes because that's what's real. These desires, I'm not even going to call them base desires because that's making a value judgment on them. We're not interested in doing that. We're not interested in making value judgments on things. That's not spiritual. What we're interested in is being completely open to what is happening, to what is real. So on a social level we can certainly work towards world peace in terms of politics and a greater society. But on a personal level, when you hear people banging on about high ideals, you kind of wonder well, what's really going on, what's really going on in that person. There's usually some kind of anger, which is indicative more, more of personal pain, which they are putting it on to the, the world at large. And if, that, if that's the level that person wants to operate on, that's fine. If that's the level we're talking at in terms of political change, that's fine. But spiritually, we want to look a bit deeper than that and look at the basic pain that most of us suffer just as a result of 
our stories, our understanding, and the basic directions that our mind takes us in. This mind which very often is not working in our own best interests. So we're not interested in understanding really. We're not interested in stories no matter how glorious they might be. Especially stories to do with God and stories to do with worshipping God. Because they all presuppose divisions. They're all ways of moving away from what is real. So we're advised here to abandon all such limited concepts. God is usually very limited by the people that worship him. They believe that his word can be put between the covers of a book. He usually has to have a human agent to do his stuff, doesn't he? God is so limited by his followers that he needs to use them to do his work, usually his dirty work actually. Anyway, let's not go there. So we abandon such limited concepts, abandon the division between the worshipper and the worshipped, the Lord, and we worship the self by the self. And this isn't the egoistic self. The self is just what is going on. And we certainly don't worship our basic emotional tendencies. These are what we have to acknowledge. And we acknowledge our addiction. We acknowledge our addictions because that's basically what they are. They're like addictions. And we don't go along with them. We allow them to be without going along with them. So we need to be at peace, pure. So eventually, eventually we can be at peace, pure, free from cravings. Consider that all your experiences and expressions are the worship of the self. And we don't categorize these experiences. We can see them as craving because they're taking us away from the self. So we can see directly what is taking us away from the self. This isn't a categorization, we can see it. And if we cannot come back to ourself, if we cannot bring our attention back to itself, then we can only observe without getting caught up in these cravings. And if our cravings are so strong that addiction is then we need to get some help and do something on that level. But otherwise, spiritually, we don't scratch them. We observe them. We use them as an opportunity to acknowledge our reality. That reality might not be what we want it to be at that particular moment, but then we have to acknowledge that too. Sometimes we just have to ride out the storm. We ride out the storm and then when, whenever it's possible, we bring the attention back to itself. And this is worshipping the self by the self. So everything's an opportunity. Even when we're unable to practice, that is still an opportunity.